if you are looking to create content at scale across different media, whether it's blog articles, videos, social media posts, then this video is for you. Welcome to Design Hustle, where we talk everything design. Today, we deep dive into various strategies that one can adopt for effective content creation. Now, mind you, this video isn't about how you can create content that's viral or content that works across different social media platforms. Instead, this is more about how you can create a bunch of different content forms much faster. As established, creating impactful content is very important to be successful on social media or whether it's even creating hours of content for say a course that you're selling on Udemy. Irrespective, I'm sure we're all always pressed for time considering the different number of things that we are constantly juggling. And yes, of course, in today's day and age where AI is there to help you produce content much faster, but a clean process and approach is still very important to create massive amounts of content. And this video is more about that. So do watch till the very end to get a bunch of tips and tricks to make the same happen. Right, so diving right in. The first aspect, of course, is strategic planning. Only when we've already thought of what we want to do well in advance can we eliminate unnecessary stress that comes with spontaneous creation, right? And one aspect that has worked really well for me when I get down to planning content is thinking of a one-to-many form. An example of that is something like this, right? Where you create maybe a long-form article and editing some specific quotes out of it could potentially help as tweets, that particular article could get repurposed a little bit to become a script for a long form video that you could publish on YouTube. Cutting exciting one minuters out of it could potentially become reels or shorts that could then work on Instagram. So this way you can see how we can set up an omni-channel distribution so to say where from one piece you can create a bunch of different content forms. Right and let me show you a couple of examples of how and where we have actually done this kind of stuff. So this is a blog article on our website which is about writing product explainer videos and about the problem solution structure in particular. And you can see how um, you know the content about this has been created to work as an SEO article so to say. Now same thing uh, at some point was also a LinkedIn post of mine and I made it in the form of a carousel that clearly breaks down all the different components of this particular narrative structure. And the idea at some point is also to repurpose this and make a video out of it. It's not produced as yet, but when it is, it'll definitely be there in the description box. Right, so moving on to the next strategy, which is batching tasks together. You ideally want to make sure your workflow is as simple as possible by grouping similar tasks and tackling them together. It's almost like you get into a mind frame of doing one particular thing and as much of that as you can knock out, the better. It's almost like when you sit to write, you'd rather write three videos worth of scripts Instead of writing the first script, then recording it, then post-producing it, then getting back to writing again, recording it, post-producing it, etc. How I would personally approach this is write three scripts all in one go, then record all of them together and then post-produce them together. And just getting into that zone of doing one task for a longer time just makes things a little bit more efficient. So another quick example of the same is how I approach say content writing for LinkedIn where when I sit to make carousels for example, I make a bunch of carousels all at once, as you can see over here. And it's similar in design, which kind of helps very easily segue into the third critical thing that we can do, which is template-based designs. So the idea is not only to enhance efficiency by using a template in a recurring manner, but also it kind of helps create some brand consistency. Needless to say, it not only saves time, but also reinforces your brand identity across various materials, right? And this is an example of how we've made a template for ourselves on Canva for our Insta posts, which probably looks something like this, where I have a bunch of different permutation combinations of text and images. And then depending on what kind of content I'm talking about for Insta, accordingly it flows in into the post as we can see here. So creating a template in that sense makes approaching content much easier, much simpler and far less overwhelming in general. It's about putting that one time effort at the very beginning to create a comprehensive template. But once that's done, everything else is very smooth sailing uh, right after. The next thing that I couldn't recommend more is maintaining repositories. Keeping a comprehensive list of content uh, whether it's ideas, different CTAs, types of assets or stock footages that you keep. Organizing a repository like this definitely helps make work happen much faster. 
and this is a quick example of how my template folder looks right so anything related to animation for example i got a bunch of moji rt files that i keep using again and again uh, whether it's borders for different creatives that i'm creating i got a bunch that i've saved already whether it's textures that i want to use in a particular design or something i got a bunch to overlay on the creatives i make so having a folder like this just makes creating content much easier for me in general rather than searching online and scouring the net each and every time I have to make something new. Like I said, none of these ideas really have anything to do with how we could use AI to create content at scale and I'll definitely make a video on that as well because there's a bunch of places where just integrating AI into the pipeline can make things happen much faster. But right now we're just focusing on the process and approach largely like I said. And one very important component of this process in general is step one which is the idea and where things stem out from. So penning down all your ideas, whatever it may be, just kind of helps you foster your creativity a little bit, especially because it's such a free flowing process to creating content in general. And it's almost like a journal of all the different thoughts that you have that you think you could then repurpose or curate into a content form that's helpful for your audience. So this is a quick look-see into say how I maintain some of the content ideas that come to me for LinkedIn, for example, these are the things that I've posted till now and and of course this could also get extended to become maybe a calendar of sorts so that you actually have a timetable or schedule so that you're a little planned with respect to when, what kind of content you want to put, how you want to clump them together and things like that. But yeah, I mean, whatever idea comes to me, I just make it a point to kind of uh, populate this sheet with it and then if at all I find it interesting enough or, or if it's still contextual enough at that particular time, then great, I proceed with it and make it happen. Of course, you could also use Notion for this, which is a very powerful tool for documentation, but I'm very comfortable putting my thoughts on Excel. So yeah, those are about four or five different ways via which you can create content at scale very efficiently. If you just kind of figure out how you can incorporate some of these things that we just talked about, I have zero doubt that you'd be far more efficient in creating your content and you'd move much faster. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you picked a thing or two that could help you in your hustle, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.